Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. In today's video, we will describe and explain the differences between ionic and covalent bonds. So, so let's do this. Our learning target for today is I can describe and explain the similarities and differences between the properties of ionic and covalent compounds. Let's start off with a quick intro. Ionic compounds are formed from ionic bonds. An ionic bond is one in which electrons are transferred from one atom to another. This results in one atom becoming a positive ion and one atom becoming a negative ion. Let's use sodium chloride, aka table salt, as an example. A neutral sodium atom has 11 protons and 11 electrons. A neutral chlorine atom has 17 protons and 17 electrons. When they bond together, sodium gives up one of its electrons in this outermost shell to chlorine. Now sodium has 11 protons and 10 electrons giving it a positive one charge. And now chlorine has 17 protons and 18 electrons giving it a negative one charge. They both do this to satisfy the optic rule, which is basically having eight valence electrons or outermost electrons in order for an atom to become stable. Covalent compounds are formed from covalent bonds. A covalent bond is one in which electrons are shared between two atoms. This results in neither atom having a positive or negative charge. Let's use O2 as an example. Both oxygens have six valence electrons and need two more to become stable. So how do they achieve this? They do this by each oxygen sharing two of its valence electrons. Now they each have a total of eight valence electrons to satisfy the optic rule. The types of bonds within a molecule influence the types of properties that the substance will have. Let's take a look at the characteristics and properties of ionic bonds first. Ionic compounds are typically solids at room temperature. They form a crystal lattice structure when more than one molecule is present. Let's take a look at the following figure. Notice that the positive charges and negative charges alternate. This results in a very strong attractive force between all atoms of the crystal. Because of the strong forces between atoms, ionic compounds tend to have very high melting points. This means that it takes a lot of heat to break their chemical bonds. Ionic compounds tend to dissolve in water due to the breaking of their positive and negative bonds. Let's take a look at the following diagram as an example. When the water molecules surround an ionic crystal, the positive and negative charges of the ionic compound are pulled apart by the positive and negative charges of the water. In fact, because water is a polar molecule, which means it has positive and negative charges, the water is able to surround each positive and negative charge of the sodium chloride molecule and use the opposite's attract method. This means that the positively charged hydrogen atoms of water attract and pull apart the negatively charged chlorine atoms from the sodium chloride molecule. The negatively charged oxygen atoms of the water attract and pull apart the positively charged sodium atoms from the sodium chloride molecule. Because the sodium and chlorine ions are free to move around in the water, this results in the solution being able to conduct the electricity. This is because electrons can travel from the positive charges to the negative charges or to the water very freely. This is different from the ionic crystal structure because the ions are free to move in a liquid or aqueous solution that contains ionic charges. Covalent compounds consist of two or more nonmetals. Covalent compounds are typically liquids or gases at room temperature. They have a low melting and boiling, which means that they melt easily and at fairly low temperatures. Covalent compounds do not have positive and negative charges, so they do not form solid crystals like ionic compounds. Some covalent molecules will dissolve in water, but others may not. The dissolving process is different from ionic compounds because there are no ions or positive and negative charges to be surrounded by water. However, if the molecule is polar, like water, the water can surround the molecule. These types of molecules will dissolve. Some covalent molecules will not dissolve in water because they are not polar molecules. Oil and wax are great examples of covalent molecules that do not dissolve in water because they do not have positive and negative charges. Based on the density, these molecules float to the top and the water sinks to the bottom. Because there are no ions to transfer electrons, covalent compounds do not conduct electricity. Pure water should not conduct electricity as a covalent compound. The only way for water to conduct electricity is for some ions to be dissolved in it. So let's do a quick recap of ionic and covalent compounds. Ionic compounds are bonds between metals and nonmetals and are usually solids at room temperature. 
They transfer and or give or take electrons, which creates positive and negative ions. They form crystal lattice structures because of their positive and negative ions. They have a very strong attraction between their bonds, which gives them a high melting and boiling point. Ionic compounds can conduct electricity when dissolved in a solution because of their positive and negative charges. Covalent compounds are bonds between two or more nonmetals and are usually liquids or gases at room temperature. They make bonds by sharing electrons. They have weak bonds between their molecules, which gives them low melting and boiling points. This means that it's very easy to break these bonds apart. They usually don't dissolve in water, although some will. Most covalent compounds don't conduct electricity when dissolved in liquid solutions because they do not have positive and negative ions. And that's our video for today. Now let's check your knowledge to see how proficient you are with describing and explaining the similarities and differences between ionic and covalent bonds by taking our video quiz. Use your electron device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below to take the video quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results in your proficiency sheet and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you, you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive, productive day. Not as serious as yours, I share. Let's not stand on ceremony here, Mr. Wayne.